check it out. Memphis Jones at Graceland, maybe for the millionth time in my life. One of the biggest fans of Memphis music ever, right here. Of course, a huge chapter of that book is not just the man, Elvis Presley, but the Presley family. And dig this. I'm sitting next to Lisa Marie. I'm just going to give you a round of applause. I am thrilled. Thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you. And can I just ask you right off the bat, when they said Lisa Marie is coming downstairs, to you, I mean, to me, that's like, hey, everybody get ready. But to you, is that just coming home? Yes. Yes. I mean, I was trying to, I actually tried to use the trash compactor in the kitchen a minute ago that I used about <laughs> 20 years ago, and I realized it didn't work. So, yeah. yeah. Plug. <laughs> How about that? So when you see, like, when you come and you see, you know, there, there's ropes, you know, where the public's not allowed to go, you're seeing your, you're seeing your home. I mean, you're having memories and everything there. Mm -hmm. You know, this couch I used to, we used to play hide and go seek in here a lot when I was little. So awesome. Turn out the lights, go pitch black and hide. Oh right, because downstairs down here, there's no there's no sunlight. There's oh, that no sunlight. Sounds like fun. There was no adults. There was no nothing. <laughs> that sounds dangerous. It was. Well, the jungle room, you know, here at Graceland, obviously there's things about it that the whole world is just you know like catchphrases. Everybody knows there's a jungle room somewhere out there. The Elvis fans know what it means more. The jungle room to you, that's that's a part of you know who you are, part of your childhood. What, what was it like, you know, just walking in the jungle room? There's a fountain, you know, there's carving. You know, the jungle room when I was little I used to have a, very, a big screen television and one of those old style projectors in the room, in the middle of the room. So I would watch um, TV in there quite a bit, actually, at the time. To you, it was in the TV room. Yeah, it was in front of the fountain. So, I mean, we would watch, um, I remember actually watching Sesame Street in there a lot. Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. Favorite character on Sesame Street. Just found this out for myself. A lot of soul searching. Cookie Monster, you got a favorite? I love Cookie Monster, but I also like, I, I liked Oscar. Oscar, did you relate to Oscar yeah, somehow? I, <laughs> I just thought he was, I liked his, I liked that he could go away in his trash can. I, what, I was fascinated by his trash can. I don't know if you've ever done an interview where you're discussing Oscar, Gra Oscar the Grouch's trash can, but I'm gonna go with this. Is your favorite part when he goes down looking for something and there's all kinds of, <laughs> yeah. you can see his eyes. And all kinds of stuff comes flying right. up. And, and also that it, he goes down really low, he, the echoes, and <laughs> it seems to have a whole you know universe down there. There's another I was, life. I was fascinated. That and, you know, like I, I Dream of Jeannie used to have the same with little herb, little bottle. I love that. How about I guess that? I like the idea of going somewhere and hiding. <laughs> That's kind of heavy. I like that. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say this. Last night, Lisa Marie was at Sun Studio, and this is like, for me, this is a huge deal. I got to go out and watch her and the band, and the band sitting right over here, some of the most incredibly talented, understated, unassuming musicians. They walk into the room, they plug in. You don't even know that you're standing in the room with a bunch of superstars, and the sounds that came out of the speakers in the control room last night floored me. Brand new album, Storm and Grace, single, the single, the first song that I heard that they performed last night, You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet. I want to talk to you just a little bit about what it was like for you to go into the studio with your band performing live the same way that it did, you know, half a century ago when, you know, young men like your father and those other country boys with a heart full of blues and a handful of the guitar walk into that room, 706 Union Avenue. Did that, was that meaningful? Was that sort of a homecoming also? It was, you know, I, I was really moved when I got in there because I never, unfortunately, had the chance to get over there when I was, you know, here or in Memphis. I never got a chance to go over there. So that was my first time there. And, and to just walk in and start singing in the room was, you know, you look around at all these incredible photos and all the history, and I'm just, it's mind blowing. And that yeah. everything happened in that room, and it's exactly the same. The tiles are the same. And um, it was, a, and every, the, I turned around, and the band was grinning ear to ear. Everyone was just so <laughs> excited and blown away to be there. That's awesome. I, we were sort of hanging around next door in like the gift shop area. It used to be a little restaurant called Taylor's. And the piano player came over, and his, like you were saying, his mouth was hanging open, his eyes, you know, he's just not blinking, and he was looking <laughs> around, and, you know, he was struck by yeah. the history, I mean, the momentous history. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole world has to reckon now that rock and roll has done more out of the middle of the 20th century in Memphis, Tennessee. It's done more to shape pop culture than any anything else. It's true. And you saw that the firsthand. The and the, well, the, the blues and rhythm and blues and rock and roll, it's one crazy oh, yeah, storm that true. came out. Mm -hmm. now, when, but when you were there last night and you were performing, did you, as, as you were singing, you know, this music, you sort of described it. You've described you, that your lyric writing is sort of like channeling. Mm. As this was sort of coming through you, did you sort of feel yourself adding your name to that list of great musicians who Gosh. made history? I mean, I, I was so honored to be able to do that. You know, I mean, I, I, I it was an honor. It really was. It was, um, um, and then, you know, the room is really, 
simple and it's just mm. such a it's really old school to do it there and, and that, that's yeah. also really amazing to be able to do that and experience that the way that it was done then and you know then cool. go in the control room and listen to it after we were blown away at how good it sounded yes absolutely you know? so that, that can be a litmus test for a lot of bands whether a band can show up in a room and really bring it and i'm gonna tell you right now i was standing there with my mouth hanging open just listening to the music because you guys really brought it last night well, thank I'm, you. I'm not saying that because the camera's on i've been saying it to everybody in my life since i left the studio last <laughs> night so, That's so sweet. cool thank you elvis week is coming up uh, the end, in August, we're looking at the 35th anniversary, and it's going to be a big year. Mm -hmm. What does Elvis Week mean? I mean, to you, you've got a life, you know, you've got a family, career. What does, does Elvis Week even appear on your radar? Of course, of course, of course it does. Um, I just make sure that everyone is going to be happy and everything's set up, and you know. Every you have year plans? is different. Do you have plans, personal plans for Elvis Week this year? This year, I don't have them yet, but they will come to me very soon. <laughs> very gonna, soon. So we're going to let you know what plans <laughs> no. you've come up with? No, 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 no. I usually come up with it the last minute. That's normally how I work. A lot of times I'll meet people just here in town. I'll meet people from all over the world that, you know, they've been saving for years. They want to come to Graceland. You know, they want to go to Sun. They want to go to the places where rock and roll really, you know, had its first real impacts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and they all want to talk about who owns Graceland? You know, mm. it seems it's, you know it, it. It is important to not maybe not the tourist, but definitely to the purist. It's important that Graceland doesn't turn over and become just a commodity, but that it maintains some integrity. Absolutely. Do, is that a struggle at all? I mean, I don't want you to like you know let any cats out of the bag, but like for you to just for you to maintain the integrity, the Presley name, the thumbprint, mm. is is that difficult for you to do just and balance with your personal life? No, because, you know, it's been running so well for so long. I own, just to clear the record, yeah. I mean, I, we still, very my family, I still own Graceland without, awesome. without question. Awesome. Um, and it, it's nice to have, you know, investors and other people around, but they would never, um, you know, the whole, it's very endearing. I mean, it's very important to keep my family still. My cousin, you know, is head of maintenance here still, and my other cousin is, you know, head of operations. And I mean, it's a very yeah. family-run, well-oiled machine has been for years. No one is gonna ever uh, change that. Um, awesome. You know, I specifically, my mom is also really, really, really good at watching, you know, uh, quality control and all that kind of stuff. So she'll come in there, and I know, you know, she'll wow, set it straight if it's going awry. I love that. Yeah, I love that. It is so important. And I know that this is going to be really valuable, you know, for people to get to go to the Elvis.com website and hear you, you know, sitting right here saying, you know, the experience that you have is the experience that I'm intending for you to have. And that's, that's a real strong connection. Absolutely. I mean, what, ha you know, the, the, the Graceland is my, is mine and in my family that, that it's the house itself and the entire grounds and everything. Part of it is 100% in my awesome. family and with awesome. us. Yeah. Awesome. I heard you talking to someone last night about your, uh, cover art for the new album mm -hmm. that you were that you shot it in some, some woods close by yes right over the white fence you know behind the church you know, right yeah. right mm -hmm. right so that's on just on the north side mm -hmm. but on the on the album it look, i saw the images that were on the posters last night it looked like you're just sort of in the middle of nowhere that's just right here in, in graceland yeah it's right in the woods it's right uh there's a little road behind graceland that goes up to the back why did you um, like why why did you choose that i mean of all the places in the world um, because I was never allowed to go over there. It was always kind of forbidden. And, you know, I don't know. It just, it just, it was winter and it was woods and it was, seemed like it went really well with the, with the whole cool. body of work of the album. Um, I was never allowed there because it was kind of creepy over there. You know, it was also public <laughs> property. So anybody could be oh. there in the, in the woods okay, kind okay, of lurking. Yeah. Gotcha. So I was always protected from going that way. And anyway, it's nice to just be able to run free. Just doing your in thing. trees. Man. Kind of just sticking it to the man. Right. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. The single um, that, that I heard of you guys chose for the single, I really enjoyed all the songs and the lyrics were just, they're profound and artful and tasteful. You know, there were, there's a lot of inspiration I was able to glean, you know, like I was sort of able to put my own story on your story. But the, the, the main single, like the thing that's going to be presented first, you ain't seen nothing. You haven't. You ain't seen nothing yet. That's that's a statement. Mm -hmm. And it's a. It's a, and Last night you told me you didn't feel like that was a confrontational statement. But what is that statement like to the Elvis fan? Let me put it like this: to the Elvis fan who's diehard, and for the past 20 years they've loved Elvis, and they do not know that they're about to become just as diehard for Lisa Marie Presley. And you know, just one song. You know, what is that? What? How? How is this going to reach the public who doesn't know you that well yet? 
I don't know, but what you said is very important to me about, you know, you make your own story when you hear the song. So I don't no. tend to, like, that's an important thing for a songwriter to be able to do, regardless of who I am and where I came from. I mean, just that I can write a song and have someone make it their own somehow mm. is, is really important to me. Um, I... I just, that's just kind of what I do, and, and it reaches people, and, it, and it, it makes them make their own story, and that's all I can hope for, you know? It's a connection. You're just sort of, you're, you're making yourself available to the listener, and they're let, you're letting them connect. That's, mm -hmm. that's I'm, I'm writing, it's it's like I'm writing, I take my, what whatever my perspective, or what I've heard, what I've seen, what I'm thinking, first, second, third person, literal, metaphorical, and then trying to... I labor over lyrics for hours and hours and hours and phrases trying to make it so that, uh, you know, it's universal for everybody. So if somebody, anybody listens to it, they they can feel it. Because, you know, that's what's important about music. Man, that's fascinating. I'm a, I, I write songs too, but as, as I'm listening to you talk about writing, why why do you write? You've written all your life. I've, mm -hmm. I watched you in an interview saying when you were in your kid, you kind of journaled. You know, mm -hmm. you just you just have always written. What what is that? Why do you do that? I don't know. It's the one. I mean, I, I'm kind of. I don't. I, I don't know. It's some kind of a therapeutic thing for me. You just write it all out. To write. Do you keep journals? Not anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got you. Not after I've seen what happens. That sounds like to wisdom. I got yeah, you. Oh I wow. I mean, I I wish I you know I I would lose it is the problem. Yeah. I don't, I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached to me. So it would be a mistake for me to be writing a journal, I think. Awesome. <laughs> but you've just been a writer all your life and now you've moved that into, you know, just, do you consider yourself a songwriter? Like, could I, could I tell people, yeah, Lisa Marie is a songwriter. Is that like how you define? I would like to. I mean, that's what I do. That's, that's what I do. That's what I, I'm proud of that I, that's just what I do. Well, you, you're great at it. You're great <laughs> at it. I really just, I just loved it so much. And, and you know what? I mean, like, I, my bag is, music from the first decade and a half of rock and roll and things that are newer than that when i was a younger man you know i had ears for it but the the more import that i find in the classics you know i'm talking about you know the the, the explosion of memphis music mm -hmm. i just can't really hear a lot in modern music that i enjoy because i'm looking for i'm looking for an integrity or a purity mm -hmm. and so i was really really shocked i was floored last night at the impact that the musicians the music and the lyrics and your vocal style had on me. I was just, I was really, really impressed. And I know, I'm not just saying this, I'm not a salesman, and I ain't getting a kickback. I'm just saying, <laughs> I know that if you'll give an earball to this album, you will love it. Put two of them in there. You'll love it twice as much. I think it's great. Your <laughs> I mom, need to have you around more often. Your mom, <laughs> hey, my good point. Your mom said in an interview that you were born to do this. That you were that you were born to do this, and I also read online that this is the album that you were born to make. Mm. You know, it was 2012 got a new release. Do you feel like that's someone trying to put a label on you or put a sticker on you, or do you think, you know, yes, when I'm doing my thing, apart from you know the obligations that I have, when I'm doing my thing, is this was this the album you were born to make? I, I think so. I mean, I had to go through a little bit of process to get to here. But what do definitely, you, mean? you know, I mean, I had to, the other two records were, I had to kind of find my way, you know, it's like being oh. in a closet and trying on a lot of different clothes. And then you put on the right outfit. Gotcha. Well, so I feel like this is the right outfit. And here I am sitting next to Lisa Marie Presley. <laughs> You've got a Twitter I do. account. Is uh, that, it's Lisa I just Lisa, started Lisa about Presley. a month and a half ago. I just started. You, do you hate it? You love it. I don't know yet. I don't know. I, do, yeah, I like, I, so a lot of it, you know, I do actually like it. It, I, it is, I can see how it would, you know, it's addictive. You know, you want to. Yeah. I, I could see how it would take me, you know, but I try to, I have to. So do you want a billion people to be following you on, on Twitter? <laughs> oh, do I want a billion All right, people? we'll cut it in half, a jillion. <laughs> I'm not a mathematician. I don't know what half a billion is. Do, would you like for me right now to ask the editors to put your Twitter account right on the bottom, right, like right down here? Would that be cool? You know, absolutely. Whatever Make it happen. you feel like doing. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Listen. If you have $15 laying around, you need to be spending it on an album or you need to be spending it on a plane ticket coming to Memphis, Tennessee <laughs> to experience Elvis Week. I'm going to stand up when, when we're done here and I'm going to shake this off and I'm going to try to convince myself that it really happened. A living legend, part of the legacy of Memphis, Tennessee, Lisa Marie Presley, it is my honor. Likewise. Thank, thank you so much. Likewise. Boom! <laughs> that just happened. <laughs>